Welcome back. So on this episode, I'm going to dig into the rotating detonation rocket engine. And if you haven't seen the previous video where I walked through rockets, please, please go look at that first. I'm not going to do the basics of rocket engines here. I'm really just going to talk about the differences on the detonation side and what does it mean. And you know, so far in the series, I've been talking about the thermodynamic process of how do you extract kinetic energy from thermal energy, but I've just been framing it as suck, squeeze, bang, blow. That this is, you know, I, I do actually have to get into some thermodynamic diagrams this time to really talk about, hey, what does detonating do for you? What is this constant volume combustion? What is this pressure gain combustion? And what does it actually do? So we'll have to get into a little bit of thermodynamics, but if you haven't had thermal before, don't worry, this will still be pretty, uh, pretty tolerable, okay? So, but first I wanna just remind you of some of the detonation engine work we've done. And, you know, this is some of the videos I've shared previously. And so this is our kind of highest thrust, you know, 2000 pound class engine. On the top right, actually already going, is this is the LOX methane engine that we're working with NASA on. And you can see that long duration regen cooled engine. At, and, uh, you know, NASA has shared some of that video and we did a press release on that as well. And again, as a reminder, uh, looking kind of head on and into any one of these detonation engines, you're seeing these detonation waves, so supersonic combustion occurring inside of the annulus. And so you get kind of a long, um, these rings of fire, but it's really, uh, it's really about 10,000 times per second, these detonation waves are just chasing, chasing, chasing. And normally you have, uh, usually come in pairs or more. Sometimes, you, you know, if you end up getting one, it's, it's pretty, pretty rough in the system, but for the most part, this is what you end up seeing. And so I'm going to get into why, why is this exciting? Why is it important? And the kind of the basics behind the detonation engine. And so first to do this, we're going to come over here to thermodynamic diagrams. Okay. And, uh, what I have plotted here, this is temperature versus entropy. And then as well as pressure versus specific volume, specific volume is just one over one over density. Okay. And this is a, you know, from step one to step two to step three, step four. So step one is low pressure and step two is higher pressure. So this is the, this is the squeeze portion, right? This is where you're, you're compressing your working fluid. And this is kind of generic. I haven't written any phase diagrams on here. So just think of this as a gas generically for now. And so from step one to step two, we are compressing. That's the compression cycle of this. It even works in your car system, right? You think of your compressing step one. And the act of compressing does raise the temperature. And this little dashed line here represents, if entropy isn't changing, that would represent perfect compression, no losses. But hang on, what is entropy? If you haven't heard about entropy, it's really just the measure of disorder or the measure of how many ways you can reconfigure the same system. And so just a kind of funny little diagram for you, if you haven't had thermodynamics, here's a bunch of billiard balls, red balls, blue balls. This system would have little entropy, right? There's not many ways you can reconfigure this and still have all red, all blue. And then this over here, if I you know, pull the slider out and then stirred it up, right? Or shook it up, this would be a condition with lots of entropy, right? Each one of the red blue balls can be any different configuration, different places. And so, you know, in thermodynamics, entropy, again, is just that measure of, of kind of disorder in the process. And so uh, if it's perfect, it would go straight up and down. Nothing is ever perfect. Compression always has some losses. And that's why you're seeing one to two slide to the right a little bit. And then two to three, this is your heat addition. So two to three in, in uh, standard deflagration, also the same true as in, in um, a gas turbine engine, is you have constant pressure heat. And so really this is, this is where uh, you write that as Q. Q is coming into the system, heat is coming into the system. And then three to four is where you're extracting all of that work. And so that would represent, um, you know, in a jet engine, both going across the turbine blades, as well as kind of exhausting out the nozzle, right? You're, you're kind of doing all of that work to get back to the system. And then, and then one just returning in. And so what happens in detonation is that the fuel and oxidizer have come together and they're, they're mixing. And then you're able to kind of kick it and get it to transition over to detonation, over into supersonic combustion. So there's a great visual, visual here. This is from AFRL. They did some large eddy simulations, so really high-end fluid flow and combustion physics simulations of a rotating detonation rocket engine. And just kind of took this one picture snapshot. And so you have, you can see here in the simulation, all of these injectors, these are injecting fuel and oxidizer. And as there is fresh things, so right here, if you look at the back, 
you have sort of fresh, unburnt stuff. And this is the detonation wave. And these, this wave is kind of racing around. And so these waves are racing around. And then yeah, there's the combustion event. You can see it there. And then kind of you have some shock waves as this, this is just kind of being ejected and, and thrust is going downstream. But what's happening with that is you, you get constant volume combustion. So I'm going to come over here and look at, at volume. So it, it can't really go anywhere. In fact, sometimes you can even get a little bit more, not only constant volume, you can actually get, um, the pressure can go up more and then volume can squeeze in. So I'm actually gonna draw it a little bit more on this side where you can actually, you know, make it look almost vertical, but, but imply that you, you can and sometimes get, get more in this like this. So this would actually be step three. And then at maybe not as high as I'm drawing, so maybe back off on that just a little bit. There's step three. And then same thing, it would then, you know, expand out nearly isotropically to a new, call it four prime, on its way back in. And then same thing over here, this Q, this curve on this line on the temperature entropy line is actually a curve of constant pressure. And so I'm going up in pressure. And so this would, again, would do something like this. I mean, that goes quite as far. And so there's a bit of pressure rise and then there's four prime. So, you know, different four, right? Try and get that a little cleaned up. Different four. Okay. Four prime. Now, a couple of things I want you to see with this. First one, pressure gain. So th this is why a lot of times you'll hear this called pressure gain combustion. So I'll write that down. Pressure gain combustion. Right. You can also hear it as constant volume combustion. So same same type of term. But once you see here, this, the area under the curve, so in within the orange line, that entire area, if I were to shade that in, that entire area is how much work you're getting out of it, how much of this you're actually converting into energy. In fact, you would, you would take a look at this work, and the area under this curve is actually, you know, how much heat. The, the total heat minus the, the heat rejected your opponent out of the system. So the total heat was actually the, the entire integral under TS, not, not just the lower line. And so you can see here with the red curve, if you now add up the total red curve on this pressure gain combustion, this work, work prime, is actually greater than the original work because of that gain. Now again, th think back the two um, that view of the rocket engine, if you will, right, really hot exhaust. Because I have higher pressure, because I've done pressure gain, I have a higher starting pressure, and so I'm able to extract more, right? And the other one I want you to see here is look at the difference in exit temperature. This is T4, and the exit temperature here, 4 prime, is less. There's a, there's a change in temperature, right? So T4... T4 prime is lower. And so you can see again, you're able to, you're, you know, if your exhaust is hotter, it means you've, you've converted more of that chemical energy out into heat. And so that is the basic behind detonation. That's why we're excited about it uh, from a theory. Now, from the practicality, there's a couple of things that we had to go solve, right? And so now, you know, gosh, what, is, what does it take to actually do this in practice? Okay, the first one is stability. Can you put the detonation engine in there? Can you, can you kick it over from deflagration into detonation through this, this transition phase? How are you doing it? So one, how are you starting it? And then two, does it maintain, right? And that some of that is based on the geometry and the fuel flow rates and things like that, that stability can play a lot. Um, lots of things you have to go do to get it stable. And so at Venus, here internally, our first detonation, we actually did in August of 2022. That was, you know, we call it our debt anniversary, right? So we, we that first time where we at Venus did our own detonation on our own engine test stand here in Houston was August the 22. Okay? But not just stability, that the big thing that you want is you need to minimize the parasitic deflagration. So parasitic deflag, I'll just abbreviate. Uh, big words, what does this mean? It means between the waves, when I'm mixing that fuel and oxidizer, I need them to mix together and then stay put. Like, do not start releasing energy. 
Because if they start burning, if they start deflagrating and not detonating, then I'm actually releasing energy along the constant pressure. I'm not getting this big jump, right? I'm doing some of it over here. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull down the size of that, of that pressure gain because I'm, I'm getting rid of some of my energy in between, right? This is what makes uh, detonation with, uh, say, hydrogen really hard, is hydrogen reacts very quickly with many oxidizers. And so trying to detonate with hydrogen is, is a really big challenge. It's just so fast. You actually need it to sit. And, and then while these waves are going around, you know, 10,000 times per second, it, it might be like 30 microseconds until that wave comes, which sounds fast, but if you're hydrogen and you start reacting in two microseconds, then, you know, your challenge then with detonating with hydrogen is how can you slow that down? Okay, so parasitic deflagration, minimizing that. We at Venus have, have figured out that, and I'll, I'll stay quiet on how it's some of our secret sauce. Okay? The third one is stiffness. So some of this stability came by having high pressure in the manifold. So here in the manifold is higher pressure. That's always true in a rocket engine. Now in a standard rocket engine, you may have something like 30% stiffness. So um, your, your pressure in the manifold will be say 30% higher than the pressure in the rocket chamber. And that's, that's for stability and all sorts of good reasons, right? Making sure it flows good. And a detonation engine, some of the earlier research you may have seen are up in the 200, 300%. And so getting that down is super important. I'll stay quiet on what we've achieved here at Venus, but we've solved a good chunk of this problem, okay? And one of the ways you do that, I'll just go ahead and share this piece of it, is that by going to a liquid, so by doing liquid, liquid operations, this actually is a tremendous jump in the performance because of that. Uh, Liquids don't really compress, so what you're not having here when the pressure wave goes away, if, it's, if you're doing it with gases and all of the gases in the manifold and through your injectors are just kind of compressing in, you're losing quite a bit there. So you have to go to higher, higher stiffness. So liquid is a big key, and we achieve that at Venus as well. The third one, uh, the fourth one, right? And this is kind of the, the big monster. By the time you get all of that solved, what you then have to solve is heat. So because we are releasing it, it is hotter, right? Up here, you see this, this temperature? T3 is hotter though, right? And so rocket engines are usually already on the bleeding edge of what they can handle from a cooling point of view. And so we know when we formed Venus, that was gonna be one of our biggest challenges. And so, well, we've solved this at Venus. That's, that's how that video I showed you of the long duration engine, we have solved it. And that was a key part of, of our design, our propellant choices, our injector choices, our cooling choices, Right, a lot of a lot of IP behind all of that, and so th those are kind of the big ones, and, th and that's why when you, you know, when you see us run for, you know, usually thermal steady state in a rocket engine is seven seconds, and we see we see our temperatures roll off after seven seconds, and so having operated now at you know forty second durations, then we know we've solved the heat problem. We're able to keep it cool, and so that's that's the big four. I'm going to draw a dotted line here, and then you know say really at this point, kind of fall of um, by fall of 2023, and right now it's spring of 24, but by fall of 2023, we finally solved all this. So part of the reason if you haven't heard about us or we're starting to pick up a little bit more about what we're doing, some of it is we needed to go do all of this to figure out if we had a there there, right? Before we really started shouting to the world about detonation engines and then its combination in a rocket-based combined cycle, really we had, to, we had to do all of these things to say, hey, can we go from uh, interesting science with lots of potential, right? Again, where this is, this could give you a 10 to 15% jump in your specific impulse. Like that's a big number. We, we knew we had to solve all of these aspects in order to figure out if we even had anything. So the final step, if you were interested in this from a rocket engine point of view, not necessarily hypersonic air breathing, but a pure rocket engine point of view, then the fifth one you have to get into is the nozzle. Right, and then a little bit back to the episode on the rockets when I was talking about aerospike. So this this is an annulus, and so if you go back, if I go back to our videos, right, especially take a look at the one on the bottom, you have what amounts to be an aerospike. That's what we've done here, and so that nozzle now has to exhaust, take take you know high pressure yet unsteady rocket exhaust and expand it out like that aerospike picture, expand it out and go straight. And so that's kind of the remaining challenge to make this into a you know, pure rocket point of view is to go figure out the nozzle. And that's, that's some of the work that we're doing here at Venus. 
But however, if you're just using this in a rocket-based combined cycle, you don't, you don't need to have a nozzle. You're not actually trying to get the flow straight. In fact, you're excited about the fact that it's this unsteady ring of fire. So this is already fantastic to then take all of this work and put it inside of an RBCC. This is exactly what we're doing here at Venus. And this is these challenges, you know, kind of engineering is the, the, the science has been done. It's now, you know, engineering and weights and, and tweaking, tweaking the engine and getting ready into a flight capacity. So that's, you know, a deep dive on RDRE, but clearly you can go, go deeper and further. So, you know, reach out to us if you're interested in learning more. Of course, there's some really good papers and some more details you can dig into out in the open press. Thanks.